Imagine a world where everybody is connected. Imagine a world where somebody in Japan can do a transaction with somebody in the United States without high banking fees. Imagine a world no longer ruled by greedy corporate banks. There's going to become a time when we think of central banks in the same way we think about calling an operator to talk to a friend on the phone. This weird annoying entity that came between us and the things we actually wanted. You aren't going to drown in fees anymore. You aren't going to borrow money from a bank. You aren't going to fight a half a dozen middlemen. It'll just be you and your money anywhere on earth. And once this happens, cryptocurrency could very well make the US dollar obsolete. Once people understand how easy this is and get used to it, the demand for legacy money controlled by a government and bank is going to plummet like a rock. Welcome to the world of cryptocurrency. But you know, I think about this, and what about this internet thing? Do you, do you know anything about that? Sure. What, what the hell is that exactly? Well, it's, it's become a place where people are publishing information. Right. So you, everybody can have their own homepage, companies are there, the latest information. It's wild what's going on. You can send electronic mail to people. Uh, it is the big new thing. Yeah, but you know, uh, uh, it's easy to criticize something you don't fully understand, which is my position here. Go ahead. But I, I can remember a couple of months ago, there was like a big breakthrough announcement <laughs> that on the internet or on some computer deal, they were going to broadcast a, a baseball game. You could listen to a baseball game on your computer. And I just thought to myself, does radio ring a bell? <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Just... There's, there's a difference. There is a difference. It's not a huge difference. What is uh, the difference? But you can you can listen to the baseball game whenever you want. All right. Too. Oh, I see. So it's stored in one of your memory deals. Exactly. And then you can That's come back the way I'm saying you talked yeah, about earlier. Yeah, yeah. Do tape recorders ring a bell? <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I just I just don't know. How, what what can you just knowing me the little you know me now? What how what am I missing here? What do I need? Well, if you want to learn about the latest cigars or uh, auto racing right. uh, statistics. Well, you know, or, uh, I've got that covered. I, I subscribe to two British magazines that devoted entirely to motorsports, and I call the Quaker State Speedline about two times a half hour. <laughs> so now, now, would the computer give me more than I'm getting that way? Oh, you can find other people who have the same unusual interests you do. Uh, and... <laughs> You mean, you mean the troubled loner chat room on the internet? <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> uh, uh, I think one day I'll get one of these deals, but I, you know, I've played with them, and then you, you know, you're typing in, and then you get that thing, that little arrow. Is that the arrow you, you move bet. And then you it's bet. just, you know, it's like, oh, I get it. It's an eye test. What are we? <laughs> All right, all right, all right. Good evening, everybody. Welcome. This is Brick uh, Line Brandon from Los Angeles, California. Go ahead and type in the chat box where you're listening in from. As a dis oh, I am the founder and CEO of Ivy League Crypto Academy, ILCA for short. Go ahead and type in the chat box where you are listening in from. We are doing a special broadcast tonight. We are streaming on YouTube, Facebook, Telegram, uh, no, Instagram. And we're in StreamYard right now. So I see Miss Gina Muhammad from Philadelphia. Good evening, Gina. Miss Marnita Costa from Colorado. Miss Jacqueline Briggs from St. Petersburg, Florida. Mr. Albert from Connecticut. Mr. Weston, good evening. Miss Vasquez, good evening. Jerrion from Alabama. Janelle from Colorado. See Kitty Taylor from Los Angeles. See Yvette from Kansas. So good evening, good evening, good evening. So normally my Saturday evenings are not scheduled. Just every now and then I will do a special broadcast on something. And tonight uh, I chose to talk about NFTs and gaming and how this came to be. Uh, good evening, Jamal from Pasadena. How this game came to be is because twice a week, 
I do live classes for my Diamond members of the Ivy League Crypto Academy Tuesday, uh, two nights a week. And we take lessons from my courses. I've got more than 100 of them. And we go over it live, kind of like the five-day challenge, except five-day challenge is covering the basics. Uh, these courses are covering all of my courses. Every week, we've got a new topic, new, new, new lesson to learn. And earlier this week, one of the lessons on Tuesday night was NFTs and gaming. And I hadn't done that lesson in, what, six months, maybe? Somewhere around there, six months. And so I wrote that lesson before I joined the VARA Opportunity. And the VARA Opportunity is a big deal of that is about NFTs. It's about the digitization of our assets and being able to own your assets and in the and they're going to be in the form of nfts and most people have no idea what nfts are how it works so tonight i'm not going to do all 15 of my lessons i'm not going to go back i think we we did it just the last week and or two weeks ago in uh our our five-day challenge we covered what are nfts so tonight we're going to talk about nfts in gaming and how that uh equates to the our opportunity of of vara I will do after night. all right so uh let's see let's see where we are i see you sonia elaine barnes from from plantation florida Anna Clark from Dominica and Carolyn, I see you as well. Rodica from Wyoming and Diane from California. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Whoa, we've got Priska from Lagos, Nigeria. You are up late. It has got to be 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 1, 2. Got to be about, what, 2 in the morning? <laughs> out there in Lagos. So welcome, welcome, welcome. Or three in the morning. All right. So we're gonna do that. We're gonna do a lesson tonight. This is a free lesson. Normally you gotta pay to get this lesson, but we're going to get it to you for free tonight. Let me share screen. All right, let's pull this up. I want to make sure you guys could see my screen. Yeah, there we go. NFTs and gaming. Wait. No, you do not. Why did it do that? Let's stop screen to share it again. Share screen. There we go. All right, here we go. NFTs and gaming. So this is just a normal lesson. So um, as I go through this, I'm going to pause at different points and equate it to what, what we're doing in the VARA ecosystem with the Star VARA game. So NFTs are, are NFTs are changing the gaming industry. While the global gaming industry continues to grow across all markets, it remains structured in a way that primarily benefits game developers and perpetuates a one-directional flow of value where players spend money to unlock access to in-game assets and gameplay configurations. We call this the pay to earn model. This is web 2.0, where the flow of money going one way, you the player or your children or your grandchildren are coming to you asking for money and they're putting it in Fortnite to get V-Bucks or Roblox to get Robux so that they can get in-game assets and gameplay configurations, okay? It's important to know what the current system is. Because anytime you have a new project or a company, what problem is it solving? What is it bringing to the table that's new? In contrast, 
blockchain built games and decentralized applications apps enable players to capture the utility and value of an in-game purchases and assets acquisitions more effectively blockchain gaming in blockchain technology and gaming is driven by nfts digital assets that represent in game content now remember i always say this jp morgan chase has already declared that in game digital or, or in metaverse world gaming digital assets are going to be more valuable than real world assets is that amazing you know what else i find amazing too this morning i did a special talk about ix global their business model what they're doing the sec coming after them and we had a couple of hundred people that hopped onto that and i said the solution for each person because you can't control what the sec does you can't control what your company does you can't control what other people do you can only control what you do and the answer is education and then I said, I'm giving a free crypto education tonight. You would think <laughs> that those same hundreds of people will hop on. But no. So you guys that are here, congratulations. Because you're taking a step that most people just refuse to do. And this is the most important part. Everybody wants to make money, but nobody wants to put in the work. So these tokens are unique, rare, and indivisible. While the blockchain networks that underpin NFTs facilitate player ownership, provable scarcity, interoperability, and immutability. Together, these advantages have the potential to drive mainstream adoption and a far more equitable value model. So what is NFT gaming? NFT games, also known as play-to-earn games, are games that reward players with tokens or NFTs for time spent playing. You guys got that? I'm going to say it one more time. NFT games, also known as play-to-earn, that's the Web 3.0 model. So Web 2.0 is you uh, pay to play. Web 3.0 is you play to earn are games that reward players with tokens or nfts for time spent playing so when you look at the vara world the vara world has two things vara in-game tokens and nfts for all of the drop bo loot boxes tokens are usually the main rewards while nfts are gained by chance Players can also buy NFTs in high demand from other players and hold till the value increases before reselling. A perfect example of a play to earn NFT game is Axie Infinity. And again, I wrote this before I ever knew about Starvara. So when I redo this, oh, I'm going to have it based on <laughs> Starvara. So a perfect example of a play to earn NFT game is Axie Infinity. The game rewards players with smooth love potion tokens and NFTs known as axes. The SLP token is listed on major exchanges like Binance, so the pl players can trade them for real money. There are several reasons why many believe NFT games are the future of gaming. NFT games comes uh, uh, offers benefits that can't be found in traditional games. So. Uh, just to give you guys a little heads up, in December is when I was announced I'm releasing three new courses in January of 2023. DeFi, Decentralized Finance Courses, NFT Courses, and Metaverse. And so the reason why I came out of retirement and I joined with this opportunity of Vara is because when this came on my desk at the end of December, I had just written a course about exactly what Vara is doing. This is one of those courses. So my light bulb went off. I said this morning, follow the river of money. 
I already knew where the river of money was headed to. I was just waiting for the right opportunity that I could jump on and then Vara hit my desk. There are several reasons why many believe NFT games are the future of gaming. NFT games offer benefits that can't be found in traditional games. Can you enlarge the screen? Why is it is it small for you guys? Hold up. I am on StreamYard and StreamYard is doing things a certain way. What if I let me do this? Let's see here. Let's see. Okay, testing, testing. How about now? Is it bigger? So if I go from beginning. All right, let me know now. Is that bigger? It looks like it on my other screen. All right. Thank you. Oh, did it go small again? Why is it doing that? I think I got to learn this. There's, there's something with StreamYard and um, my monitor because I've got a I've got a big monitor here. All right, let me do it a different. I can stop screen, share, share screen again, and window. NFT gaming. So I'm going to have to do it this way. So I'm not going to be able to do a slide sh slideshow version. So uh, this should still make this, this screen big for you guys. All right. If the screen size is good, let me know. If it's good, type in the chat box if we're all good. I got to remember, if I'm ever going to use slides, I got to do it through Zoom and not StreamYard. All right. We're good. We're good. There we go. Okay. So there are several reasons why many believe NFT games are the future of gaming. NFT games offer benefits that can't be found in traditional games. It offers a source of income. In many underdeveloped and developing countries with poor economies, the unemployment rates are very high, and NFT games offer people in those areas an opportunity to earn money from doing what they love gaming that's what i tell my son how would you like to make money playing a video game yeah why not <laughs> in countries like the philippines axie infinity is very popular and players in the country reportedly earn between 200 to a thousand dollars per month now, I can't tell you how much you can make playing Vara. I don't know that yet. Uh, Vara is far more advanced than Axie Infinity, I can tell you that. But if players are already earning between $200 to $1,000 a month in Axie Infinity, what do you think they're going to be doing in Vara? When players purchase items... In traditional games, the items are locked to the game. So in other words, when my son comes to me about Fortnite and he buys Fortnite, he can't do anything with it after that. He buys he buys dance moves. He'll buy uh, a new skin, new avatars. He wanted to be Anakin Skywalker, Spider-Man. Well, it's locked just on that in that that world. At best, I don't know if you can do it in Fortnite. I know they can do it in Roblox. They can trade items with other players. But they figured out in Roblox how to have an underground economy. There's third-party websites where players are selling their stuff. Might as well call it an NFT. They're selling it, and then they meet up in the world to do the trade. It's technically illegal to do. The, the, the game platform doesn't like you doing that. But they're already doing it. 
every NFT is unique. It cannot be replicated since they are built on blockchain. This means players can be assured that their hard earned NFTs can't be duplicated or stolen, except in cases of a scam or when a player grants malicious co smart contract access to their wallet. It's impossible to lose an NFT. Provable scarcity. The worth of an NFT is usually determined by how rare it is. The blockchain technology on which NFTs are built help maintain transparency. This makes it easy to verify the owner of an NFT and its scarcity. Transaction fee commission. The benefits of NFT games are not limited to players only. Developers are also included. When an NFT changes ownership, the game publisher can charge a percentage of the total amount of the transaction. This way, the publisher earns money every time an NFT is sold. Several NFTs have been sold for thousands and millions of dollars. So this is a great way for game publishers to earn money. It's also a great way for us to earn money. Because those of you who have access keys, you're getting a percentage of every single bond that is being bought in the game. And from what I'm told, there's going to be even more ways that the access key holders are going to be able to earn outside of just the bonds and the staking. Those tokenomics have not been released to us just yet, but what we already have is already exciting enough. The ability to attract venture capital, good investors, especially those with a good understanding of cryptocurrency and NFTs, are always looking for promising projects to invest in. Game publishers can leverage this advantage to attract venture capital for themselves. Gaming and blockchain. The global gaming industry generates revenue across three market subsets, mobile, PC, and console gaming, which together are valued in the hundreds of billions of dollars and growing. However, while industry incumbents profit from its robust growth, players generate little lasting value for themselves. After investing in expensive consoles, PCs, or mobile devices, players enter gaming environments that offer a tiered access user experience. In these traditional games, money flows in one direction. Players must spend money to access in-game content and exclusive features. Let me ask you guys this question. How many of you are playing games right now, whether it's a console, whether it's PC, or whether it's apps on your phone where you spend money for content? My wife plays some, I don't know what it's called. It's like a dress-up model character where she goes shopping for the character and dresses it up. But she has to pay for that. And a small transaction can be 25 cents here, 50 cents there, $2 there. So you guys should be familiar with that. There's one game I got on my phone that I need to delete because this is taking all my money. And I got suckered into it, and then I got addicted to it. But the thing about this is that everything is... If you want to move two steps, you got to pay. So if you can see that on my screen, you see that on the, on the other side, pay $2, pay $1, pay 99 cents, this type of stuff. They give you some stuff for free to whet your appetite. But if you really want to get going, then you got to pay a little bit extra money. That stuff adds up, <laughs> adds up a lot. So... That's how it's always been. But what if that money starts to flow in the opposite direction and comes right back towards you? In contrast, blockchain-enabled games 
many of which are decentralized applications, dApps, which is what VAR is. It, it, uh, this is what you would consider a dApp. Did you guys know they just finished the giveaways? Someone won a free PlayStation. Someone won a thousand VP, Viper ship skin, and dropped vault. And I'm showing my phone. I can just show my screen. I'll show that in a second. All right. This dynamic introduces a paradigm shift that allows players to better capture the utility and value of assets acquired through in-game purchases, regular gameplay, or promotional events. Now, I will answer another question that somebody asked me today, especially after my call of talking about IX Global. So, well, well, well Brandon, I mean, you're in a, a crypto-based company. So what's the difference? Uh, no. No, 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 no. I am in a company, a networking company, that is selling a product called Starvara. The product by itself can stand alone without the networking side. The product by itself is generating revenue without the networking side. The product by itself has a utility, has a use case. There's going to be thousands, hundreds of thousands, and millions of people playing the game and purchasing the product. That's what we're selling. We're not selling investments. We're not selling the ability to earn by doing absolutely nothing. Even if you purchase an access key, that access key is not going to generate any form of income unless somebody pays for the product. And I'm saying it this way because for those of you that are going to be going out there and, and marketing and advertising Vara, you need to, this is what you need to be saying because this is how it works. Can I make passive income? Well, you can purchase an item that will generate income if, if people buy the product. If you purchase an access key and nobody buys the product, you don't get paid. Okay. If I'm making sense, type one in the chat box. If you're getting this, the product has to have a use case, a use case behind it. So, for instance, when a player purchases an armor upgrade in a traditional game, their only benefit is enhanced gameplay within the context of that one game. However, in a gaming ecosystem that utilizes cross-platform NFT tokens, the same armor can be tokenized in a way that transforms in-game purchases into transferable assets that may confer benefits across interconnected games or be exchanged for money or other digital assets. Oops, I got Underlying blockchain networks enable the generation and deployment of these NFTs within multiple gaming environments. Because NFTs are unique and can be designed to retain value beyond the game in which they originated, blockchain-built games have the potential to expand gaming economies dramatically, establish new gaming categories, and fuel development of new games. Okay, so let's say I am not a gamer, but I see what's going on here. I see what JP Morgan is doing. I see what Bank of America, I see what HSBC, I see what, what uh, Wells Fargo, all the big banks out there are getting themselves positioned in the metaverse because of NFTs, this digital world that they are already predicting is going to be a five to $13 trillion industry in the next five years by the end of the decade. That's where the river, I said it this morning, this morning, where people kept asking, Brandon, can you tell me where to invest? I said, no, I cannot. I'm not a licensed financial advisor, but I can give you a hint. Follow the river of money. And if that concept is foreign to you, 
because the only concept you know about river of money is go to school, get good grades, and get a nine to five job. If that's the only way you see money flowing, unless you become a baller, uh, an entertainer, a movie star, or win the lottery, then you have no idea about the river of money. So if the, if you're in that situation, then you next you think, who has money? Who's got the most money? Banks. Okay. What are the banks investing in? So instead of asking me, what should I invest in? Ask your bank, what are they investing in? Whatever, whoever you're banking with, type that in the Google box and put metaverse next to it and see what happens. <laughs> or blockchain and see what happens. So forget being a gamer for a second. When there's almost a billion people playing these games and spending money on it, you don't need to be a gamer. All I know is that's where the river of money is flowing. My son proves it to me every single day. Oh, that's another one, Darla. Real estate in the metaverse, tokenized real estate. I have a lesson on that as well. NFTs, but that's not our lesson tonight. <laughs> But that is also huge. Real estate. But not everybody can afford real estate starting out. But they can afford to take advantage of this. Gaming, where it's only $6. Hmm. So to explore how this process might unfold, it's important to, it's important to, first, first to understand NFTs. I keep hitting this. I think I'm on my slideshow and I'm not. There we go. Although many NFTs use Ethereum's on uh, pay, hey, pay close attention to this because remember, I wrote this before Vara, before we learned about the new technology of dark fusion. Although many NFTs use Ethereum's ERC 721 token standard, NFTs are also prevalent on several other networks, such as Tron with blockchain cuties. EOS Knights and Neo Block Lords. The many benefits of decentralized gameplay include. Now, the reason why this, because we were doing this lesson on Tuesday night and my head was exploding. So I'm like, wait, hold up, hold up. The whole point of what VARA is doing with their technology with Dark Fusion is we're not using the Ethereum smart chain contract. We're not using Tron or Binance or the others. We're using Bitcoin. Why is that important to know? The SEC, as I talked about this morning, has declared war on everything crypto in the United States except one token, one coin, Bitcoin. They have thrown in the towel on Bitcoin. Bitcoin is now untouchable, in other words. They're not touching Bitcoin. And they can't now because they've already declared it not a security. So any project that's using Bitcoin's blockchain is under that umbrella. So if you're a company and you're like, yeah, I want to tokenize myself and, you know, let's, instead of me building a whole new blockchain, let me use premium smart contract. You're going to second guess that. Wait a second. Will that put me at risk? Because the SEC considers it a, a, a security. The fees are high. But what if Bitcoin is able to do it? Up until a few months ago, you couldn't use Bitcoin. Vara is bringing the first to market game, blockchain-based game, using Bitcoin Lightning Network through Dark Fusion technology. If you know that, that's the, put the game aside for a second. The game is just the carrot. It's the proof of work, like Bitcoin is the blockchain. Another thing I say why education is so important, people don't even understand the difference between Bitcoin and blockchain. Without the blockchain, there's no Bitcoin. Bitcoin is a reward for blockchain. This technological revolution has nothing to do with Bitcoin. It has to do with the technology that makes it possible. Same thing here. Starvara, the VARA project, is not about Starvara the game. It's the technology that's making it possible that other businesses will want to use. And those of us that are VARA ambassadors will benefit 
because we own the tokens and the access keys. And now you're going to have multiple businesses using this technology. Are you guys, you guys seeing what I'm going with this? All right, so let me finish this. Traditional in-game purchases are one-time, non-transferable investments that remain locked in a single gaming world. In contrast, using NFTs in gaming environments grants players ownership of their in-game assets instead of the game developers. You see, the developers will get their cut, but you are the owner. Through blockchain technology, gamers can save in-game purchases, sell them to other players, or move them into other supported games. The benefits of gaming NFTs also has provable scarcity. Collectors value rarity and authenticity. And the scarcity of in-game NFT purchases is provable through immutable records. Oh, oh, I, I won't get away from that word there, Darla. I'm, I'm getting away from that word. Passive income? You're not going to hear me talk about that no more. Because it's being used as a weaponized way with the SEC. They want to weaponize that term, passive income, meaning that you don't have to do nothing and you're going to get paid over and over and over and over again. While it may be true, <laughs> we're not we're not going to be advertising that over here. You can earn by if you get the access keys and the tokens when other businesses pay for the products, we get paid. Okay. I'm, I'm teaching at the same time. I want you guys to under, know this. Don't run around. You don't got to do nothing and you get paid every single month. No. No, that's not true. So provable scarcity. So this distributed public ledger validates the number and uniqueness of each NFT as well as its ownership history. Interoperability. Traditional online games exist on centralized servers. As such, in-game assets exist within proprietary systems that don't communicate with others. In contrast, decentralized games exist on independent blockchains that act as the back-end framework for other interconnected games. As a result, game assets represented by NFTs can be designed to be interoperable across different environments. For instance, two games built on the Ethereum network can feasibly support the same in-game assets as vehicles, armor, or even entire characters. I have a live version to show of this. If you go to Netflix, pull up an anime show called Sword Art Online. There is, I don't know, maybe seven seasons and versions of this now. But the first one is about a vast MMO world, just like Ready Player One, but it's fantasy based. Like they're back in old times fighting with axes and swords and whatnot. Like they're in the Middle Ages. But then as the seasons progress, you know, the characters playing that game ranked up high, meaning that they've got their skill sets high. They've collected a lot of weapons. They've collected a lot of in-game content, a lot of money. And then a new game came out. I forgot what it was called. It was like Gun gunmen something it was a shoot 'em up game like the wild wild west type it was based on the same technology as the fantasy based game they were using the same technology just a different game style so the players in that fantasy world were able to port their player over into this gun world and they were able to keep the same rank keep all of their items that came with them. That is huge. Just think of it like this. If you have an account on Facebook and then you want to create a Twitter account, you've got to start all over. And then you want a YouTube account. You want an Instagram account. You want TikTok. You want Twitch. You've got to create separate accounts for every single one of these. The future of the internet is going to be you're only going to create an account one time. And any new platform that comes, you're just going to be moving 
your account to every platform. This is already happening in the gaming world uh, where you have Steam, you have PlayStation Network. I think Xbox has something like that. They call it a gamer card where no matter what game I play, my gamer name follows me. My skills, I'm able to track. If I pull up, where's my PS app? PlayStation app. I pull this app up right here. It shows, hey, I'm gonna add to library. It shows games on here that is attached to my account that my son's like, oh, my son's been playing this, huh? He played, who is that, Connoisseur? He just got this for his birthday, Dying Light. I don't even know what that's about. Dying Light. So he's playing Fortnite, Dying Light. There's Call of Duty. This is what friends are playing, too. NBA 2K, Grand Theft Auto. And so these are all different games. But my character and my advancement, I'm able to track through all of it. Steam is, your, is, is the same way where you can purchase different games on the same platform. What Starvara is doing is being the Steam of the crypto space and not games, but doing what Ethereum is doing. It's going to be collecting a lot of businesses. That's where the real money is going to be. So that's interoperability. Immutability. When a traditional online game shuts down, users traditionally lose all of their in-game purchases. NFTs, however, exist independently of a specific gaming platform and live on the blockchain itself. For example, when I was playing this game right here, decade ago, Matrix Online, I have one of the most successful clans and I was one of the richest dudes in that game. But it shut down. What happened to all of my stuff? Do I still have access to it? Can I sell it? All the hours and time that I spent, not only time, years, I think we played that for like four years. All I have is memories and screenshots. That's it. But what if I was able to NFT all that stuff? Hmm. Think about that. So as such, in-game purchases can be bought and sold regardless of what happens to the game. And new games can be designed to plug into an existing blockchain protocol. Furthermore, blockchain-enabled game assets cannot be duplicated or tampered with because of the permanent record each NFT generates upon issuance. Oops. NFTs may seem like a new concept in gaming, but the truth is that NFT games have been around for quite some time now. The first NFT game, Crypto Kitties, was released in 2017. I still don't understand that game. Axie Infinity was released a year later and wasn't popular at the time of release until much later. There's absolutely no doubt that NFT games are causing a massive change in the gaming industry and handing power to the players, again, I wrote this before I heard of Starvara. This should give you a little insight on when, when I saw Starvara, why I jumped all over it. They offer advantages that were previously deemed impossible to get from games. There's also another reason, because I missed out on Gala. I could have made millions on Gala, and I, I missed out on that. Gone are the days when spending hours playing video games were seen as a waste of time now is equivalent to a full-time job. Although the adoption of NFTs in the gaming world comes with benefits, it also presents significant obstacles to overcome. Most notably, NFTs need to be made more appealing and intuitive to mainstream consumers who might not be technically oriented. Oh, Lorna, you've seen that anime. Yeah, you know what I'm talking about. And because NFTs possess intrinsic value, there's a risk that some will be used predominantly as speculative assets. This potentially could motivate players to purchase in-game assets with the hope of selling them for future profit 
instead of using the assets within the gaming. That is not a bad thing. So I, I, I wrote that. This potentially could motivate players to purchase in-game assets. Yes, that's the whole point. There's going to be a group of people who have no desire to actually play the game. But they're going to purchase and buy up as much of the assets as they can early on and then sit on them. Wait for the game to grow. Wait for it to mature. And then put them up for sale. Because that's exactly what I'm going to do. <laughs> I'm already doing it. I will show it. Well, when I stop here, I'll show you. I'll show you what I've been doing. Uh, this potentially can motivate players to purchase in-game assets with the hope of selling them for future profit instead of using the assets within the gaming ecosystem as intended. That's another thing about the MMOs. The, the most popular feature of Star Bar has nothing to do with the game itself. It's going to be the social aspect of it. People going in there and hosting meetings and doing trading and I'm going to be doing all of my my crypto stuff in there. My, my crypto talks, I'm going to do it in the metaverse. Why just look at each other on Zoom or StreamYard when we could be running around as characters? We can all sit around my million dollar loft, be in the space station, in a classroom type of, I mean, your imagination, I might have my own planet. Huh. My own planet called ILCA. Hmm. And because NFTs possess intrinsic value, there's a risk that some will be used predominantly as speculative assets. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it doesn't matter what the game intends. What matters is what the people intend. Despite these challenges, not a challenge. I'm going to have to rewrite this. The potential for profit within the gaming industry will motivate more non-blockchain focused brands to experiment with NFTs. Oh, you like that one, Marita, huh? Have my own planet. <laughs> I might just have a conversation with Greg about that. A crypto-based planet for crypto education in the metaverse. So, Lord, I've seen and read a lot of light novels about online players and earning wherein they can convert game currency to real money. That's right. It's not a fantasy anymore. This is reality. So despite these challenges, the potential for profit within the gaming industry will motivate more non-blockchain-focused brands to experiment with NFTs, likely by forming partnerships with third-party blockchain projects that have the technical expertise needed to bring their vision to life. Ooh, right there. Oh. Okay, let me read that again so you understand. Think of this. Starvara is creating the technology so that third-party blockchain projects, uh, so that people, brands, brands, non-blockchain-focused brands to experiment with NFTs by forming partnerships with third-party blockchain projects like Dark Fusion that already have the technical expertise needed to bring their vision to life. Simultaneously, the broader success of gaming dApps will likely play a role in further catalyzing NFT infrastructure improvements and drive the development of innovative solutions that unlock mainstream adoption. As a disclaimer, this information is intended for educational and training purposes and should not be construed as investment advice. As with all financial decisions, you should contact your licensed financial advisor before investing in any financial instruments. And I am not done yet. I want to actually show what I was talking about here. Game library. Okay, let me share screen again. Share screen window. All right. So one, congratulations to these people. They just had a, a, a giveaway for PlayStation 5. Uh, VP points in your, your business, Viper skin, drop vaults, but I have been collecting stuff. So I can click on, oh yeah, that's the game there. I'm gonna click on inventory. So I got three founders helmets, founder status badge, founder spaceship skin, founders hoodie, 45 drop vaults, Two Liberty Spaceship skins, an Independence badge, 
the the oh, I almost read that wrong, but horny badger, the honey honey badger. <laughs> I only have one of these, and the marauder flower childs. Now see. What I like to look at stuff is you see unlimited, unlimited, limited, varying rarity, exclusive items. So my goal is I'm going to keep one and I'm going to sell the others. But I'm going to be accumulating this stuff. Generic cosmetics, spaceship skin, drop vaults, badges. I can even go to the store. And let's see. Oh, yeah, that's the boosters. Plasma, neutronium, tachyon. Uh, let's go back to, let's see the giveaways. So uh, these giveaways just ended featured giveaways. So let's see when another one, another one begins. Uh, but anytime there's going to be new store stuff there, I'm going to, I'm going to purchase. I want to buy some stuff. Uh, this is coming up soon. Watch the trailer. Yeah. Oops. All right, let me stop sharing screen. So that is one of my lessons from my NFT courses. And uh, you guys that are part of ILCA, you've already gone through those courses. If you want to buy my NFT courses, you can do so as well. Also, um, I will be doing a full show presentation if you want to learn about what VAR is all about tomorrow night at 8 p.m. Eastern, 5 p.m. Pacific, same time, only it will be on uh, Zoom. It won't be on StreamYard. So get back to whoever invited you to listen to, to me tonight. They will give you that link to see an official presentation. And I hope for, even for you guys that are involved in, in right now, you got a good idea on why when I saw Starvara, why I jumped on it. Because I had wrote this course before I even heard of Starvara. Follow the river of money. Enjoy the rest of your evening. I want to go watch uh, Simone Biles and WWE SummerSlam. So I will see you guys tomorrow night. Take care. Bitcoin Brandon out. Bye-bye.